breaking news at this hour, word of a settlement in Dominion's $1.6 billion defamation suit against Fox News. In was suing Fox for $1.6 billion, saying that the network showed complete and utter disregard for truth and facts and accuracy. So what a 24 hours it has been south of the border. One of the biggest defamation lawsuits in U.S. history did indeed come to a very abrupt end yesterday afternoon. This 11th hour settlement between Dominion Voting Systems and Fox News. Fox has admitted to telling lies about Dominion that caused enormous damage to my company, our employees, and the customers that we serve. So let me set the scene for you here. A $1.6 billion lawsuit heading to trial. The defendant, the most watched cable news network in the United States. Fox News, accused of fanning the flames of an election fraud story, the 2020 election, that had no basis in truth and knowing it was a lie all along. Now, we thought this was going to trial, expected to hear opening arguments. Fox disputes the accusation, but then the sudden news of a last-minute settlement. Lies have consequences. Over two years ago, a torrent of lies swept Dominion and election officials across America into an alternative universe of conspiracy theories causing grievous harm to Dominion and the country. Yeah, you heard right. $787.5 million U.S. That is a huge amount of money that Fox has agreed to pay here, and in a case that Fox News seemed willing to litigate. Now, contrary to what you heard Dominion say just a few moments ago, Fox has not admitted to lying, per se. Its statement, we acknowledge the court's rulings, uh, court finding that certain claims about Dominion to be false. We are hopeful that our decision to resolve this dispute with Dominion amicably instead of the acrimony of a device of trial, allows the country to move forward from these issues. So no apology, just, you know, here's some money and let's move on. So on today's program, we're going to explore what this means for Fox News, for the future of news coverage, and for the battle between truth and lies in an age of disinformation. But first, why would Fox choose to settle? You know, they don't really explain in their statement, but one way we can begin to answer that question is by gauging just what kind of a case Dominion was building against it. Dominion's case, given in the first line of its complaint, Fox, one of the most powerful media companies in the United States, gave life to a manufactured storyline about election fraud that cast a then little known voting machine company called Dominion as the villain. Dominion claimed Fox broadcast a series of verifiably false yet devastating lies, lies that were good for Fox's business, and that Dominion suffered enormous and irreparable economic harm. Now, Fox News claimed that they were just doing their jobs as journalists, covering explosive allegations made by high-profile figures connected to Donald Trump about whether Dominion was rigging the election. A massive and coordinated effort to steal this election. The electoral fraud that would be uh, perpetrated through electronic voting. They used the machines to trash large batches of votes. And that being sued for it represented an attack on press freedom. So how might a jury have weighed those two arguments? The outcome of our presidential election was seized from the hands of voters, where, of course, it rightly belongs and now resides in the control of lawyers and courts and highly partisan, clearly corrupt big city bureaucrats. So no matter what happens next, that is a tragedy. Many Americans will never again accept the results of a presidential election. That was Tucker Carlson of Fox News the day after the 2020 presidential election. That narrative that the election was stolen from Donald Trump, it was pushed hard by Fox in the days and weeks that followed. We don't know anything about the software that many say was rigged. We don't know. We ought to find out. That alleged fraud, which, of course, didn't exist. There was no electoral fraud, no convincing evidence produced, no truth to the story at all. But that allegation put the blame squarely on the ballot scanners used to count votes in more than half of all U.S. states. I know that there were voting irregularities. Tell me about that. 
That's to put it mildly, the computer glitches could not and should not have happened in at, at all. Those, that is where the fraud took place, where they were flipping votes in the computer system or adding votes that did not exist. We need an audit of all of the computer systems that uh, played any role in this fraud whatsoever. Sidney Powell, who you just saw there, was the lawyer who would emerge as one of the central peddlers of the election fraud fairy tale. But there were others. Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, was also front and center. And according to Dominion's complaint, Fox News' Janine Pirro said, Dominion Software Systems has been tagged as one allegedly capable of flipping votes. The president's lawyers alleging a company called Dominion, which they say started in Venezuela with Cuban money and with the assistance of Smartmatic software, a backdoor is capable of flipping votes. Fox News gave them a platform, and Dominion's case hinged on the accusation that they knew fact from fiction, but stuck with fiction. Now, you might say that fiction was born out of anger. On election night, the decision desk at Fox News calls Arizona for Joe Biden, which outrages Trump and his supporters. I'm sorry, the president is not going to be able to take over and win enough votes to eliminate that seven point lead. Fox personality Sean Hannity's show two nights later would focus on voter fraud. But following that program, Fox's chief legal officer, Viet Din, sends a text to an executive. Hannity is getting awfully close to the line with his commentary and guests tonight. Later that night, Fox host Brett Byer sends an internal text saying there is no evidence of fraud, none. Allegations, stories, Twitter, bull. Nothing concrete. The following day, Tucker Carlson sends a text about Trump and his business dealings. What he's good at is destroying things. He could easily destroy us if we play it wrong. Around this time, rumors about Dominion software issues pick up steam. By this time, several media outlets project a Joe Biden win, and Sidney Powell takes the blame game of Dominion to a whole new level. Fox's internal fact-checking unit determines there was no evidence of widespread fraud in the election and no evidence of major problems with Dominion's systems. And as further investigations by election authorities find no evidence of vote tampering, Dominion makes multiple demands that Fox retract its coverage, warning lawsuits could be coming. But the war on Dominion is just getting started. Sidney Powell and Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, repeatedly appear on Fox News over the next few months, continuing to spread the false claims. Now, all of this is important because what Dominion's lawyers believed they could prove was that Fox News acted with malice. It's a very hard standard to prove under ordinary circumstances. You've really got to be able to show that a journalist almost in bad faith was putting forth false information that that they knew it was false and they just didn't care the difference here is that there is this really extensive track record based on the pretrial discovery that would seem to indicate that fox in fact did know about this now because this case isn't going to trial we will never know how a jury would have reacted to the evidence dominion had spent years collecting the central question of who believed what and when, that will go unanswered, at least by the standards of a court. And we will not see some of Fox News' biggest stars on the witness stand. Sean Hannity, Tucker Carlson, Janine Pirro, Maria Bartiromo, all of whom had been expected to testify. Even the founder and head of Fox News himself, 92-year-old Rupert Murdoch, escapes the possibility of being called for his alleged involvement in what ultimately was broadcast. Now, we're going to link up here with Aaron Blake, a reporter with The Washington Post. And Aaron, uh, how are you doing? I mean, th this whole story really turned on a dime awfully quickly, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of anticlimactic. Um, but we did learn a lot uh, in the last several months here. So it's kind of like, in some ways, we had a little bit of a trial without a trial. I mean, the fact that it, it even got the discovery phase. So I think there are still plenty of lessons to learn, regardless of the fact that we didn't see the actual trial. Well, well, let me ask you this. I mean, on the notion that Fox is settling, and in doing so, maybe 
avoids a worse fate. I mean, how do you see that? Yeah, it, it's quite possible uh, that the amount was about half of what uh, Dominion was seeking. Uh, this is how things generally work. There is almost always a settlement in these cases. That's been the case both with Fox News and with Rupert Murdoch over the years. Uh, they want to avoid the public spectacle. They want to avoid that adverse actual ruling. I think the difference here is that we went through a very lengthy discovery process before we ever got to that point where we got a big look at the internal workings of, of Fox News that is going to reverberate for some time. So how does this change? I mean, what are the reverberations? How does, how does it change the way Fox News operates, either because of the, the scrutiny, as you mentioned, that it's been under, or because, you know, look, $787.5 million is not a, a small amount of money. It is a large amount of money. We're talking about a company that had $4 billion in cash reserves at the end of the year, according to its financial statements. This is likely not the end of the matter for them. They're also being sued by another voting technology company called Smartmatic. Uh, Dominion is also suing Mike Lindell, who is a major advertiser on Fox News. So this could cost significantly more as time moves on, including shareholder lawsuits. As far as Fox's journalistic reputation, I think this... Uh, this carries some some big lessons. Uh, I think there's always been at least an idealism that while Fox's primetime hosts offer a certain viewpoint, its news operation is insulated from that and is a little bit more objective. I think much of what we saw here cast out upon that, and I would not be surprised to see other media outlets treat Fox's new, Fox News' coverage of things in a different way based upon what we learned about how Fox News handled these things. Well, let me ask you this before I let you go. Does this change the way Americans might see the media writ large or Fox News particularly? You know, like there, there's a part of me that would like to think that for all of those people who tuned in to Fox News and believed the lies, that, that maybe they would think otherwise now. But, but you tell me. It's, it's a really good question. And, and I think it, you need to look at how Fox News itself has handled this. The story on their website uh, this morning is 161 words long. It makes no reference to the amount of the settlement, and it doesn't delve into any real detail about the substance of the lawsuit. This is going to be something that Fox is going to ignore, and the conservative media ecosystem is so insular that you wonder if people are ever, ever truly going to consume what just happened here. So I, I, as far as what it means for, for Fox and kind of the conservative side of the aisle, the election-denying side of the aisle, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it kind of passes without much notice. Aaron Blake with The Washington Post, thank you very much. Thanks, Andrew.